Hi everybody, good Saturday morning to you and welcome to peaceful bucolic Pheasant Creek in Sugarland, Texas. This is VibeFortBend.com. I'm Roger Smith here to bring you the first of two games today. And the first one is the Austin Bulldogs, the Lady Bulldogs taking on the George Ranch Longhorns. First place in District 26A is on the line as these two teams take each other on. And it's the Lady Bulldogs who are really off to an awesome start under head coach LaQuisha Dickerson. They have a 4-0 record in district play, and their overall record is 18-4. So we'll be sponsored by Xfinity, the future of awesome. Also, First Tire and Automotive with four great Fort Bend County locations, including on Eldridge Road in Sugarland, Katy Cinco Ranch, Great Wood, and also First Colony. We're brought to you by Archer Volkswagen, open since 1956 and ready to serve you Monday through Saturday. You will feel like family at Archer Volkswagen. And we're also brought to you by the Needville Insurance Agency. They can get you the best rate on your home and car insurance. Check them out. Bradley Stabenow and his team at NeedvilleInsurance.com. We'll be right back with the Countdown to Tip-Off show, and we will visit with Jessica Gaines, the head coach of the George Ranch Lady Longhorns, when we return on VipeFortBend.com. For nearly a decade, Comcast has been helping students get ready. We've connected 4 million low-income students to low-cost, high-speed Xfinity Internet. We're working with hundreds of school districts across the country to sponsor free Internet and laptops. And now, we're turning 1,000 community centers into lift zones, Wi-Fi-enabled safe spaces to study, so more students have the tools they need to be ready for anything. Learn more at comcast.com education. First Tire and Automotive understands with the new year comes change. Well, we don't believe all change is good, so we are keeping our $15 off an oil change. So now's the time to head to the website, firsttireandauto.com, and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. <laughs> Good Saturday morning to you. Welcome to peaceful, bucolic Pheasant Creek in Sugarland, Texas, where we've got a big basketball game as the Austin Lady Bulldogs are hosting the George Ranch Lady Longhorns. And it's time for us to talk to Jessica Gaines, the Lady Longhorns head coach. I look at the standings and it's Austin leading the way thus far, but you and two other teams are only one game back. Can you talk about the way your season has gone so far? You know, we had a really good preseason. Um, I thought we had a schedule that we, we needed to use to get us ready for this district. This is a really tough district. Um, so, I mean, the way the standings are, you've just got to be ready to bring it every day. Well, I also noticed that uh, this game, I thought it was going to be at 1130, and it's going to be at 1030. Uh, it may be kind of bad news that we have to do it that way, but... It's good news for me because I have another game at one in another place. So no JV game today, right? Correct, correct. I mean, and then the reality is, is with everything going on, we've all been really flexible. I mean, with the thing about it, this district, these coaches communicate really well, and um, we just make it work however we can, just do what's best for our kids. I looked at your roster and at Austin's roster, and if I read it right, both of you only have nine players on the varsity. So I guess that means you have not a lot of depth you got to make sure you don't get in foul trouble and might we see you kind of bring up some players from the sub varsity to help fill it out later on in the year yeah you know i mean we've had nine kids I mean, eight sometimes we've figured it out we've made it work the kids have adjusted they've had to learn to be disciplined and 
you know, typically when they want to go get a foul, they have to know, like, I got to let it go. Um, but I know, like, with our schedules the way it is, we've had, I've been able to move up some kids and give them that opportunity, maybe not to go in the game, but just to experience varsity level. But some have gone in, and they've realized the pace is a lot faster. But I think it's a great experience for everybody. By the way, whenever I look at a team, and I have many to look at because we, we do many different games with many different teams, and I will look usually go to the max preps page and see if there are statistics there and I noticed that I didn't see any for your team and that's fine but I'm just gonna ask you are there one or two players that have to be product productive if you're gonna win today oh yeah I mean we talk about it all the time we've got to have I mean in order for us to be successful we've got to out rebound teams um, and we we've got to be able I've got to have at least two to three kids that are in double digits um, and then everybody else has to contribute I mean for Savannah Velasquez she's great I mean she's a senior for us she does a really good job pushing the ball getting getting us set up into our offense but she also attacks the rim really well um, we also have Leslie Foran who she's kind of a three four combo she can get down and transition she runs the floor well she kind of is a matchup issue for teams because she is really a guard, but I play her in the post position. Um, but she's super athletic. And then we've got Lauren Stevens, who's a post player for us. Um, when she's on, she's on, and that's a good thing. And the good thing about her is she's got good size to her. So we'll see. I mean, Austin's got some good size to him. I mean, our kids may be a little smaller than they are, but they do play big. And then we're also missing Rachel, who's out for a little bit. But other than that, we picked up where, we'll just pick up where we left off. So I, I think I saw you have two players who are six feet even and everybody else is a little shorter yes. than that. Yes, um, and that's, you know, the thing about it too is we've taught them, I mean, size is, yes, they're small, but you can still block out. Here's how you play post defense and things like that. So it's the little things that we have to do today. And speaking of little things, I remember last year Dulles went undefeated through their whole season until they, they finally lost in the playoffs. But they didn't have much height at all either. I noticed they were just relentless on defense and they went with the full court press and I'm not going to ask you what you're going to do because I know you'd have to kill me if you were to tell me that. But it's been great visiting with you, Jessica Gaines. Thanks a lot and good luck today against Austin. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. We'll be back with rebuttal from Coach Laquisha Dickerson of Austin when we continue on the countdown to tip-off show. This is VipeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Welcome back to the Countdown to Tip-Off show on VibeFortBend.com. We are in peaceful, bucolic Pheasant Creek in Sugarland, where the Austin Lady Bulldogs are off to a great start in the 2021-2022 season. First of all, Coach LaQuisha Dickerson, Happy New Year, even though it's eight days late. Yes, thank you. Happy New Year. And you are already having a happy old year because your team is off to an 18-4 and start, 5-0 and in their district games. You have three teams that are nipping at your heels right behind you at 4-1, and and one of them is George Ranch. Mm -hmm. What do you think it's going to take to win today and keep in first place? Um, well, we're going to continue to do what we've been doing. We're going to do what we've, what we've done all season to get here. Um, we've prepared. Um, that's just to go play hard, um, commit to defense. Uh, we've been out rebounding teams uh, right now at 60%. 60% of the time, 60 to 70% of the um, time, we're getting a defensive rebounds. So we're limiting teams to one shot. Um, and if uh, we can do that today, um, I feel super confident in us um, coming out victorious today. And, and by the way, uh, I look back to what Dulles did last year. That's kind of a description of the way they played. Very relentless with their defense. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a lot of height, mm -hmm. and yet they seemed to win the battle on the boards every game. 
Have you seen your team doing what they did last year when they went undefeated? Similar. Uh, we do play big, so we do um, rely on our um, uh, our height. I have uh, I start three kids that are six foot and above, so um, we we try to establish the rebounding game early. Um, they're long. Um, we may not be the quickest on defense, but we do try to pride ourselves in being in help. Um, we want to be um, um, uh, have Andrea Sertivan, uh, my freshman. She's an, a great on-ball defender. Uh, sometimes she might get beat. We hope that that doesn't happen tonight because Savannah's pretty quick with the ball. But um, but if she does, uh, we rely on our, our length um, and our athleticism to be where we're supposed to be defensively. And if we can um, alter shots, we feel like that if we alter it, um, our timing is good enough to go and secure a rebound. And I also want to make sure I say names right. It's Andrea Sturdivant, is Andrea, that correct? Andrea, Andrea Sturdivant. Sturdivant, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, um, so are there some things that you've been able to scout as far as what George Ranch does? And I know they, they probably have a little bit of a height advantage, not an extreme one necessarily, mm -hmm. but what do you, what's the best plan of attack to make sure that they don't carry the day? Um, I mean, I, I think that, that their guard play is what their strength is, if you ask me. I mean, I've had a chance to watch them a couple of times. We were in the same tournament. Uh, we got off early, so I was over at the Travis game the other day. Um, and like I said, I've been, you know, I was at Lamar, uh, Lamar Consolidated for eight years when Savannah was a middle schooler. Mm -hmm. um, and she used to come to the school all the time and work out with me and my girls before she was even in, um, in middle school and high school. So um, she and Rachel um, Okoye are their catalysts. I don't know if Rachel's playing today but we're prepared for whatever um, I think if we can control penetration um, if we can control the boards um, and if we can transition on offense um, I feel like um, uh, our scoring threat uh, with Andrea and Gabby and then India Jackson has been playing real big for us if we can uh, do those things and we can get you know those easy transition baskets um, I, I feel I feel good about countering whatever it is that they have for us and one final question, I noticed their roster and your roster both show nine players. Mm -hmm. And a lot of varsities would want to have ten or more, but I, I guess it's ten. been... I'm it's not sure who's not on it. I need to check and see. Maybe, maybe I need to just count more carefully. <laughs> yes, I have ten, so we're right at ten. Um, I, I go maybe uh, seven deep. I may use two, maybe three off the bench. Um, but we, 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 roll, we roll with five or six for the most part. Um, and we've been doing that all year, and so we're going we're gonna to stick to the game plan. I mean, right now it's one game at a time. Uh, we're excited about the success that we're having at Austin. Um, it's truly been a blessing to be over here shifting culture with these kids. These kids have bought in, um, and, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, we can get Austin, uh, Austin back on the map. All right. Well, you're doing a great job thus far this season. Thanks for being with us. The tip-off is just a couple of minutes away. We'll be right back on BikeFortBend.com. Thank you. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. For nearly a decade, Comcast has been helping students get ready. We've connected 4 million low-income students to low-cost, high-speed Xfinity Internet. We're working with hundreds of school districts across the country to sponsor free Internet and laptops. And now, we're turning 1,000 community centers into lift zones, Wi-Fi-enabled safe spaces to study, so more students have the tools they need to be ready for anything. Learn more at Comcast.com education. Hey high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help! Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. 
Invite View also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vibe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vibe View ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out more about Vibe View today. Just about five minutes away from starting our game today between the Austin Lady Bulldogs and the George Ranch Lady Longhorns. We'll be right back to give you the starting lineup for the Lady Dogs after this announcement from the University Interscholastic League. All of us love sports, but not all sports are created equal. College sports have big budgets, dedicated alumni networks, and corporate sponsorships. Professional sports have even deeper pockets. Millionaire owners, lucrative TV and radio deals, and merchandise sales. High school sports have you. Everyone agrees high school sports give us plenty of reasons to cheer. And now's a great time for us to give back. Supporting your hometown high school won't cost you much. But it will go a long way to ensuring the games we love the most are here to stay. Texas High School Sports. They're good for our kids, good for our community, and best of all, they're good for you. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. We want to thank the Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland. They take care of business every day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. This is the fourth out of five games that we'll have for you this week. At 1 o'clock this afternoon, we'll be at Bush for the boys' game between the Travis Tigers and the host Broncos. Patrick Kinnick and I will bring you the call of that one. But right now, it's going to be the Austin Lady Bulldogs taking on George Ranch. And Austin is just doing great under head coach LaQuisha Dickerson. They are 18 and four overall, four and zero in their district 26A games. They have knocked off Dulles, which just mowed down everybody throughout the regular season, district play and non-district play, as they went undefeated. But um, already Austin has beaten the Lady Vikings. They beat Elkins. They beat Travis, and they beat Ridge Point by a whopping score of 65 to 27. And Ridge Point is kind of a perennial champion of District 26A, but uh, looks like there's a, a new sheriff in town, a new dog on the block or whatever, as the Austin Lady Bulldogs have been dominant thus far, undefeated, but they're gonna have to try to keep it that way. There are three teams at three and one. One of them is Dulles, who of course their only loss is to Austin. Bush has only one loss, and then there's this George Ranch team. So George Ranch will tell you who they really count on. They have Savannah Velasquez. She really likes to attack the rim. Now they typically have Rachel Okoye in their starting lineup, but she is unavailable today. Hopefully she'll be back with the team very soon. Lauren Stevens is their post player. She stands six feet, but really nobody in this game appears to be taller than six feet anyway, if at all, maybe 6'1 at the very most. But then there is Leslie Foran, she's kind of a swing player, not just a, a shooting guard, but also plays the role of the, uh, the power forward. She's kind of a hybrid. She can do a lot of things for George Ranch. Your starting lineup for the Fer Fort Bend Austin Lady Bulldogs, the freshman phenom Andrea Sturdivant averages 17.7 points per game and leads the team with 3.6 assists per game. Again, she is only a freshman, and that's wonderful. Amina Dixon. Also a freshman, she's in the starting lineup. Then you've got Kalechi DK. She's a junior, wears number 11. 
Gabby Johnson averaging 16.3 points per game and 9.6 rebounds per game. And a senior is in the starting lineup and also junior India Jackson averages seven points, more than six boards per game. And you heard both coaches talk about rebounding and how important it is. We'll step aside and be back after this for the start of the game. For nearly a decade, Comcast has been helping students get ready. We've connected 4 million low-income students to low-cost, high-speed Xfinity Internet. We're working with hundreds of school districts across the country to sponsor free Internet and laptops. And now, we're turning 1,000 community centers into lift zones, Wi-Fi-enabled safe spaces to study, so more students have the tools they need to be ready for anything. Learn more at comcast.com education. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. First Iron Automotive understands with the new year comes change. Well, we don't believe all change is good, so we are keeping our $15 off an oil change. So now's the time to head to the website, firsttireandauto.com, and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. Everybody standing for the Star Spangled Banner here in the gym at Austin, and we're just about ready to get this one underway. So if George Ranch can come in here and get the win, that would mean that there would they would be sharing first place, and at least for now, own a tiebreaker if it came down to one leading up to the playoffs. Starting lineups for George Ranch. We've got Logan Riley. Savannah Velasquez, Morgan King, Leslie Foran, and finally, Kenna Yuga. No, I'm sorry about that. It's actually Lauren Stevens and Leslie Foran. Kenna Yuga hopefully will get into the ball game. They, by the way, they do a really good job announcing the starting lineups here at Austin. All right, as Mark Vandermeer would say, we are ready to rock from peaceful bucolic Pheasant Creek and the Austin Lady Bulldogs putting their undefeated district record on the line, taking on the George Ranch Longhorns. George Ranch wearing the road black uniforms with trim of maroon and white. 
And the Austin Lady Dogs have the white uniforms trimmed in red and black. They've usually got the Texas Tech colors, although I have noticed in more of the different athletic uniforms for Austin, they have gone more to the red and white and less to the Texas Tech look of, of all the black. So we've got a pretty good crowd on hand, and I'm hoping for a good competitive game. We've had more than our share of blowouts in the broadcast that we've done. For example, the Marshall Buffs, we've covered their basketball team twice. And on, let's see, Tuesday night, they beat Angleton by 35 points. And last night, they went to Lamar Consolidated, and the Buffs won again by 44 points. Kalechi DK in the midcourt circle and wins the tap to open this ball game. And the Austin Lady Bulldogs go on offense, working the ball around the perimeter. Long three, Andrea Sturdivant misses, and the first rebound goes to Leslie Forn of George Ranch. She gets it quickly ahead, but a pass too strong for Morgan King off her hand and past the baseline. So that's a turnover, a missed opportunity for George Ranch. Kalechi DK is going to have to deal with a full court press. She's playing catch with Sturdivant. Back and forth, now they get across the timeline, get it to Amina Dixon. Amina Dixon over in the right corner, can't get the shot that she wants. Now we go over on the left side. Now it is Sturdivant, top of the key. And now it's Dixon from the right wing. That three-pointer is no good in the rebound to George Ranch. Quickly back down the floor, Leslie Forn in the open court. She goes to the top of the key. And a pass inside, underneath, getting the ball to Lauren Stevens. And she throws a pass along the baseline to Savannah Velasquez. And she loses it out of bounds. So two rebounds at the defensive end for George Ranch in this game, but two turnovers. That's how their two possessions have ended thus far. Ball loose. The Dogs do get it back, and now they advance it into the forecourt, pulling up from three-point land. No good by Sturdivant. And the rebound again to George Ranch and ahead of everybody. There goes Logan Riley. Layup is going to roll off, but a foul is called. She's hacked by Kalechi DK on her way to the hoop. And two shots coming here for Logan Riley. She's just a sophomore. Very cozy gym here at Austin. The crowd is right on top of everybody. And the last time that we were here for a broadcast was, I guess, um, right before New Year's Eve. It was the Travis boys taking on the Bulldogs. Very close game and a huge crowd. Logan Riley hits one out of two free throws for George Ranch, and the Lady Longhorns are on the board. They continue to deploy that full court press, and the Dogs almost turn it over, and the ball is still loose. And it is going to be a turnover. As they lost it in the backcourt, a lot of pressure on Sturdivant and Kalechi DK. So it's George Ranch to inbound the ball right in front of the Austin bench. And the ball tipped out of bounds by one of the dogs. George Ranch will keep it. And there's the pass that gets inside and off the hands and the dogs take it away. Here comes India Jackson going up to three-point land, pulls up, gives it back to Sturdivant. Sturdivant sends it to the left wing. And over there it's Dixon, can't find her shot, and then it's Sturdivant who bombs away. Gets the dogs on the board, they lead it three to one. And they start working with a full court press and a long pass that gets away from George Ranch. India Jackson steals it away. Gabby Johnson. Now gets the ball to Andrea Sturdivant who gets it into the forecourt quickly inside to Jackson, tries to go up. She is stripped as she goes up. And here comes George Ranch with the two on one. It is Savannah Velasquez off the glass, it rolls out. No good, rebound to Kalechi DK of the Austin Bulldogs. They quickly get it down the floor. There goes Gabby into the paint and she comes up short. And George Ranch grabs the rebound. Trailing three to one, in they go and a foul called. Morgan King knocked to the floor. And they say that's in the act of shooting, so two shots coming. Second team foul by the Austin Bulldogs, and I apologize, I did not catch just who was guilty of committing the foul. Deep knee bend by Morgan King, and her first free throw is good. Gets one more, and if she makes that one, we'll have a tie game. 
It's in the air and good. Nothing but net. Three to three with 5.48 to go in the first. George Ranch still with the full court press. Sturdivant gets her pass deflected. The ball bounced off the baseline and the official didn't see it. George Ranch retains possession. It is Leslie Foran trying to get loose in the corner. Quickly inside and a beautiful dime. Logan Riley with the easy layup because Leslie Foran had great vision and got it through the traffic to the open teammate. Now into the forecourt. There goes Gabby Johnson. The ball is knocked out of bounds. Savannah Velasquez tracking her down from behind. It is five to three. George Ranch on top. Sturdivant to throw in the ball in along the baseline. Sends it to the left corner. That's DK. She goes up and scores. That ties the game at five. Sturdivant with a steal and an easy layup. And the dogs quickly get the get the lead back. Seven to five, they lead it now. Here comes George Ranch into the forecourt. Velasquez running point guard, getting some instructions from her head coach, Jessica Gaines, guarded by Sturdivant. Moves right, now left, asking her teammates to do one thing or another. Logan Riley now has it, gets a pick, tries to throw an entry pass, but it's stolen away by Dixon of the Dogs. Quickly back down the floor. Travel called. They get DK for taking a step before she made her move, and a timeout called. We'll take it with them. This is VibeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Bulldogs leading at 7-5 after four quick points, courtesy of the, the last two of those four were a, a quick steal of an inbounds pass by Andrea Sturdivant, the freshman phenom, and she converted it quickly, and so the George Ranch Longhorns go back on offense. Velasquez dribbling down the far sideline and a bounce pass inside and a beauty. Lauren Stevens scores, a great assist by Savannah Velasquez. Sturdivant gets it into India. Now gets it back. Launches a three. Top of the key off the back iron. No good, but two dogs get their hands on the rebound. It is Amina. <laughs> Dixon comes up with it. Gets knocked down. And that's the first foul on George Ranch. Dogs inbound from the near sideline. They're going from left to right here in this first period. Amina Dixon gives the ball up, gets it back. Now to Sturdivant. Sturdivant throws the ball over the head of India Jackson, who is trying to get position in the low block. We are tied at seven all. And both teams are pressing each other in the backcourt. Here goes Velasquez, making a move down the right sideline, going all the way to the hoop, a whistle. She's fouled on the floor. I don't think that's going to result in shots. But it is Amina Dixon who commits that foul. And now it's Logan Riley to throw it in. She hit the back of the backboard on her inbounds pass, so that's a turnover. Austin gets it back. 3.58 to go in quarter number one. We're tied at seven. I think we're going to have a close game. I'm dying for a close game. Dixon getting the ball across the timeline. Now quickly ahead, entry pass to India. Or Gabby Johnson, rather, and she lost the ball, and there goes Velasquez through the traffic off the glass. Oh, what a beautiful move. Scores to make it 9-7. to seven. DK in the forecourt. Now it's Sturdivant between the rings. Gets the ball over to Dixon. Now it is Gabby Johnson from the top of the key. It's no good. Rebound grabbed by DK. She drives in, misses a shot that goes long, and Logan Riley grabs the rebound for George Ranch. Velasquez into the... Free throw circle. Didn't find the shot that she wanted, but now Leslie Foran tries a three-pointer. It's no good. Rebound grabs by Sturdivant after a scuffle between a couple of players. Sturdivant with a hesitation move, kicks it back out to Gabby Johnson, drives in. Her shot is no good. It was contested very well by Lauren Stevens. And George Ranch has it back, leading 9-7, to seven, under three minutes to go in the first period. 
Leadership of District 26A Girls Basketball is on the line. You're listening to VikeFortBend.com. Velasquez sends it over there to Morgan King. Morgan King driving to the right elbow. Kills her dribble, gives it to Logan Riley. Now it's Foran driving down the left side of the lane. Kicks it back out to Velasquez. Rainbow three is good. I'm not going to say a rainbow three. I'll say it's a Bush St. Louis Gateway Arch three. It was way up in the air, almost hit the rafters. And now there's a loose ball near midcourt. Two players fighting for it. You had Amina Dixon along with Leslie Foran in the possession arrow favors George Ranch, which leads by a score of 12 to seven. That's their biggest lead. Ball is inbounded to Morgan King in the midcourt circle. Now passes off to Logan Riley, gets a pick. Little give and go, but the ball knocked out of bounds by the dogs. That almost worked as Lauren Stevens set the pick she was headed for the hoop, but one of the Bulldogs got a paw in there, knocked it beyond the baseline, so George Ranch will inbound along the baseline. Into Foran. She's in three-point range, but didn't shoot it. Now it's Velasquez. Thought about shooting it. Sturdivan almost poked it away. And baseline move. Velasquez knocked down and scores. No call, but that makes it a 14-7 lead. And quickly inside, the dogs get a shot off with DK, but the shot is no good and a whistle. So the dogs were up seven to five, so it's a nine nothing run by George Ranch with 1.44 to go in the first quarter. And inside the foul was, um, it was India Jackson who drew the foul and she goes to the line. She was trying to get a put back and she was hacked in the act. Takes her time, first free throw, good. That ends the nine nothing run by George Ranch. Very vocal crowd on hand here inside the Austin gym. India with a deep knee bend and the second free throw is also good. It's 14 to nine, dogs down by five. Quickly into the forecourt. It's Morgan King into the paint. And now a little baseline jumper off the glass. Lauren Stevens knocks it in. Brings the score to 16 to nine. Now into the forecourt, India Jackson. And a pass is stolen away by George Ranch. Lauren Stevens doing the deed and quickly back down the floor. It's a free throw jumper, good. Leslie Foran. And George Ranch is on fire. Coach LaQuisha Dickerson wants a timeout and we'll take it with them. This is VikeFortBend.com. First Iron Automotive understands with the new year comes change. Well, we don't believe all change is good, so we are keeping our $15 off an oil change. So now's the time to head to the website, FirstTireAuto.com, and claim your savings. First Tire Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com. For nearly a decade, Comcast has been helping students get ready. We've connected 4 million low-income students to low-cost, high-speed Xfinity Internet. We're working with hundreds of school districts across the country to sponsor free Internet and laptops. And now, we're turning 1,000 community centers into lift zones, Wi-Fi-enabled safe spaces to study, so more students have the tools they need to be ready for anything. Learn more at Comcast.com education. Be with us for a full schedule of games next week, the way Fort Bend ISD and their partners in District 26A and also District 24-5A have made a practice now of some teams being on a Wednesday, Saturday rhythm and others on the familiar Tuesday, Friday rhythm. So we usually are able to do at least four games a week and sometimes five. And so here we go, 18 to nine, George Ranch leading Austin and the first possession after the timeout is a score. Gabby Johnson underneath, she's fouled. It'll count and she will go to the line. During the timeout, you know, they don't play music during timeouts here in Austin, which is kind of refreshing to be honest with you. 
but you did hear a clipboard bang against the floor, and I don't need to tell you whose clipboard it was, but whatever head coach LaQuisha Dickerson, oh, I gave it away. Whatever she said during the timeout, evidently was pretty inspiring, but the free throw is missed by Gabby Johnson, and here comes George Ranch quickly down the floor. Johnson swatting away the shot of Morgan King. It's still gonna be George Ranch ball, but uh, that was a slap of the ball. Quick inbounds pass along the baseline, and there goes Velasquez. It's up, no good. Rebound taken by India Jackson. She gets it over there to Amina Dixon into the forecourt. Drives inside the three-point arc, backs up. Now India Jackson near the free throw lane. Now there's been a substitution. It is Amber Kirkpatrick in the game for the Dogs. A shot is up by Austin, no good. Gabby Johnson, the rebound, goes back up, no good. Jackson tries, now Johnson, now Jackson again. And finally the ball comes to George Ranch. Savannah, Vel Savannah Velasquez out of there, gets inside the three-point arc and leaves the ball for Logan Riley, drives the baseline. Ball stolen by India Jackson and the Dogs. Move from left to right with 15 seconds to go in the quarter, trailing 18 to 11. Sturdivant over there on the left side. Amina Dixon traveled before she passed the ball. 8.2 seconds to go, and George Ranch will try to get the final points of this first quarter. So you're going to see a lot of full court pressure back there. Three Lady Dogs are in the backcourt. Now Velasquez has it, clock at six. Hasn't gotten across midcourt yet. Now she gets across midcourt, three seconds. She pulls up, throws a wild shot. It's no good at the buzzer, but a successful first quarter for the visiting George Ranch Lady Longhorns. They lead it 18 to 11 on VipeFortBend.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Welcome back to the second quarter as the Austin Lady Bulldogs, undefeated in district play thus far, are getting a tough test already from the visiting George Ranch Longhorns who lead the game 18 to 11. I'm Roger Smith here on VipeFortBend.com and the dogs get it first to start the second quarter. It is Sturdivant who moves over to the right wing and launches a three, it's good. Just a freshman, I can't wait to see what she does for these dogs over the next three years. 18 to 14 is our score after she hits that three. There goes Morgan King into the paint, kicks it over into the right corner, getting the ball to Lauren Stevens, can't find her shot. Now Velasquez dribbling and moving the ball between the rings with Sturdivant guarding her. Now she moves over to her left. Waving her teammates around, she's still dribbling. Sturdivant hasn't gotten aggressive with the defense yet. And now Velasquez with an entry pass and a layup off the glass, no good by Lauren Stevens. And a try by Erica Gibson who just came in. And a steal in the backcourt and Velasquez converts for a score. A little scoop to get George Ranch back up to a six point lead, 20 to 14. Kirkpatrick along the baseline, gets it inside and the shot up no good by Kalechi DK. However, she will go to the line. She was fouled in the act of shooting. 6.58 to go in quarter number two. I had to say that slowly because I was multitasking. First free throw is good by DK and that makes it 20 to 15. 
Coming into the game for George Ranch, Kenna Yuga. I told you she was going to get in, and she did. Second free throw also good, 20 to 16. Lady Bulldogs down by four. India Jackson comes into the game. She had a very brief rest and she replaces DK. So the press continues in the backcourt. And there goes Velasquez. She's got the moves through the circle. She goes hard to the hoop, off the glass, no good. Uh, put back try is no good by Yuga. And the dogs get the rebound with with uh, Jackson, or Johnson rather. And quickly in goes Sturdivant. Heavy contact, no call, but the shot goes in. And it's just a two point game now. The dogs are back within 20 to 18. Velasquez long bounce pass to Morgan King into the forecourt. Leaves it for her teammate, Yuga, but she traveled before she could get a shot airborne. Under six and a half minutes to go. And at halftime, we'll have an interview with Matt Malatesta, the chief content editor of Vipe and Vipe magazine. So no full court press by George Ranch. They are now into a 2-3 zone. There goes Sturdivant, thought about a three, launched it. I think it was partially blocked by Velasquez and goes past the baseline. Now into the game, it is Maliha Ajibadi Malia of George Ranch. Gets it to Velasquez quickly down the floor, misses a shot. Lauren Stevens tries to follow, doesn't work. And there goes Gabby Johnson all the way to the hoop, scoops it up, doesn't go in. Tough luck shot. She does get the rebound after a couple other players touched it and gets the put back. And we're tied at 20 with under six minutes to go before halftime. The dogs have really turned it on. They were down 14 to seven. And now they're tied at 20. Velasquez in, looking for Stevens and she's fouled as she goes up. India Jackson hacking her in the act of shooting. So two shots coming. Looks like we have a lot more fans coming in. Looks like sub varsity basketball players. What am I doing here? Yes, I am the voice of Vibe Fort Bend. I'm the voice of Fort Bend County Sports. What? Uh, no. <laughs> I like to interact with the peeps, but then I always do it a little bit too long. All right, both free throws good by Lauren and Stevens and George Ranch is back in the lead with five and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Sturdivant dribbling the ball, moves to her left. She's near the top of the key, gets it to Kirkpatrick. Does not shoot, gets it back to Sturdivant, sends it on the right wing. Now inside it is Gabby Johnson to India. And it's in for two to tie the game, 5.15 to go. Don't forget Matt Malatesta, our halftime guest. Velasquez with a little killer crossover on the hoop and off the glass. I like the way that little girl plays. She's tough. Sturdivant bumps into Velasquez, gives up the ball. Gabby Johnson in and out. No good. India Jackson grabs the rebound, saves it, but her pass is wild. And it goes out of bounds on the far sideline, right in front of the George Ranch bench. So we've got George Ranch on top by a score of 24 to 22. 450 to go in the half. Austin, uh, by the way, I misspoke if you were listening to the countdown to tip-off show. I said that the dogs are 5-0 in district play. They're actually 4-0. And, and George Ranch is at 3-1. And, and here they go. It is Lauren Stevens with a pull-up jumper from 12 feet. It's no good. And her teammate Erica Gibson grabs the rebound. A very tall sophomore. Well, you know, the, uh, the roster says she's 6 feet. She's got to be taller than that. Thumbs up if you think the girl shooting free throws is taller than six feet. Yeah, I think she is. And the first free throw is good. George Ranch ups the lead to 25 to 22. George Ranch, 13 and seven overall coming in in addition to that three and one district record. Who let the dogs out? 
Gibson second free throw off the back iron. I wonder if that bothered her. But the rebound to George Ranch. It is Malia. Now she gets the ball to Velasquez, pulls up for a jumper. I think it was from three-point land. No good. Follow is no good by Gibson. But George Ranch gets yet another rebound. Morgan King now kicking it back out to Malia. Her shot is no good. And the rebound comes down to India Jackson. She gets it to Sturdivant. Closing in on the four-minute mark in the first half. Sturdivant pulls up for three. No good. But a long rebound, and it comes down to DK. And she traveled before she made a move. So it's 25-22, George Ranch on top. Logan Riley dribbling across the midcourt stripe. Stops her dribble. Passes off on the left and gets the ball to Malia. Now it's Velasquez driving the left baseline. Runs out of room and the ball is stolen away by DK. Taps the ball to Sturdivant. And there goes Andrea. And she's fouled in the backcourt. Or at least, uh, no, it's not a foul. The ball was just knocked out of bounds. Last touch by George Ranch. Sturdivant across the midcourt stripe. DK moves toward the top of the key. Now Sturdivant launches a three from the left wing. Ratatatsen goes down through. And that ties the game at 25. Official timeout, we'll take it with them. This is VibeFortBend.com. Um, my little uh, commercial thing that plays the commercials is not working right now, so I'm going to have to try and pull up a new one. Yeah, I'm, I have a new one now. And I can play commercials in the future, but I don't have enough time to play a commercial during this particular timeout because the buzzer's about to go. Look out. Here it comes. Okay. Three twenty-two remaining in the first half. What a competitive game that we've had. 25 all. The Austin Lady Bulldogs taking on George Ranch. This time, no full court press by the Lady Dogs. Velasquez brings it up. Sturdivant picks her up as she crosses the timeline. Dribbling with the left hand, now moves to her right. Entry pass, stolen away. India Jackson takes it all the way down to Gabby Johnson, but the ball is knocked out of her hand. Here comes Velasquez back the other way, down the far sideline, into the free throw circle. She's hit as she goes through. Ball is on the floor, so is she, so is a couple other players. So are a couple of other players. Sorry about the incorrect verb tense, but the ball is a held ball and will belong to George Ranch. Malia Ajibati Malia will throw it in along the baseline. Slaps the ball, looking for a teammate. And gets it in there to Logan Riley, who pulls up from 10 and scores. The dog's defense kind of lost track of her. Sturdivant brings it up, goes on the right wing to DK, can't find her shot, and she traveled before she threw a pass, dragging that back foot. 2.36 left. Now we cross the two and a half minute mark as Velasquez brings it up, Sturdivant picks her up at midcourt. Now dribbles to the near sideline, a near steal, and Sturdivant got her hands on the ball and stole it. And now Velasquez tries to get it back and impeding her progress. Now she gets a pick, gets into the forecourt. Sturdivant sends it over there to Gabby Johnson, into the paint she goes, lays it off. And a jumper long, no good by Dixon. And George Ranch leading by two, quickly down the floor. Logan Riley from 10 feet off the back iron, no good, rebound, tap to Sturdivant. Under two minutes to go, and the dog's down by two. Sturdivant kills her dribble. Looking for someone to throw to. Gets it to Kirkpatrick. Now right back to Sturdivant, now in. Gabby Johnson turned around at the free throw line, and good. 27 all. Both teams have kind of backed out of the full court press. I don't know that they can keep it up the entire game because they don't have their full complement of players. 
Neither team does. Velasquez on the left wing. Rainbow three. Way off. No good. Rebound to the Dogs. Taken by Amina Dixon. Gets it to Sturdivant in the backcourt. Velasquez trying to avoid a foul. We're approaching the one minute mark and the Dogs throw it away. A pass that goes through the hands of Dixon. Sturdivant to Dixon. One freshman to another. I think the program is going to be all right going forward for head coach LaQuisha Dickerson. Twenty-seven all and clock going tick tick tick. Now it's down to one minute. Now it's inside. Lauren Stevens makes a move. A little baby hook off the glass from the right over India Jackson, and that puts George Ranch back ahead. Twenty-nine to seven. Fifty seconds to go. Sturdivant guarded by Velasquez sends it over to the right side. Gets the ball in the hands of Manal Yusuf, who's now into the game. Yusuf. Gets the ball out of the corner, throws it away. Kirkpatrick trying to save it, but she can't. But now it goes off of a George Ranch foot and past the ba baseline at the left end. Logan Riley really hustling, but instead of being able to start a dribble on the ball, it hit her instep and just took off. I can't talk to you right now. I'm talking to hundreds of people. Thank you. 36 seconds left in the half. Every once in a while I have to say that. All right, here we go, a half minute left in the half. It's 29 to seven, George Ranch on top of Austin. There goes Sturdivant, moves to her right, gives up the ball, Kirkpatrick. Back to Sturdivant near the top of the key, looking at the basket, we're down to 18 seconds to go. Now she sends it to Kirkpatrick, entry pass, Gabby Johnson underneath, off the glass and good. We're tied again at 29, nine seconds to go. Velasquez looks up at the clock. She's not across half court yet. Clock down to four, trying to move in on Sturdivant, into the paint, puts it up. A wild shot, but a whistle. And I think we're gonna get a foul. Yes, we are. We're gonna get Sturdivant called for a foul with no time left. So with nobody joining her alongside the free throw lane, Velasquez is gonna shoot a free throw. Two, actually. Now, wait a minute. Are they gonna tell the clock operator to put some time back on the clock? They are. Eight-tenths of a second. Still remaining, so there are players along either side of the free throw lane as Velasquez shoots. First one up, good. 30 to 29. Everybody but Velasquez, who's wearing a George Ranch uniform, is way back near midcourt or in the backcourt. And the second free throw is good to make it 31 to 29. Gabby Johnson will throw it in. Sturdivant hurls it down the floor, but not nearly enough distance on that one. All right, what an action-packed half that we've had. George Ranch leads it by a score of 31 to 29. If uh, it is still, let's see, if it's 12.02 p.m. Central Time, wherever you are as you hear this, you're listening live. And if so, you should contact anybody who loves the Lady Bulldogs or who loves the Lady Longhorns and tell them to tune in to VipeFortBend.com. But you can also listen later on the podcast, and it's always absolutely free on VipeFortBend.com. We will take a break and be back with Matt Malatesta, the chief content editor of Vipe. This is VipeFortBend.com. Hello, fans. This is Bradley Stavenaugh with Nevo Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth-generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local, hometown, trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Welcome to Halftime. Glad you're with us on vipefortbend.com. And it's time to talk to Matt Malatesta, the 
managing editor, did I get the title right, of yeah. Vipe and World Headquarters and so forth? You got it. Well, one thing that I've noticed, I always like to watch Todd Freed's program, H-Town High School Sports, which comes on CW39 and also AT&T Sportsnet, and it's powered by Vipe. And one of the recent editions, you talked about early National Signing Day, but there's still plenty to talk about coming up when the other National Signing Day is coming up. So what are some of the things that you're most, um, some mysteries that maybe you're, you're looking forward to finding out where different athletes go? Well, i tell you what, it's, yeah, much of the hay is already in the barn. We've got a couple of guys left. Harold Perkins is one. He's from Cy Park. So we're not sure where he's going to end up, but that will come soon enough, probably this weekend. But other than that, you know, there's just a lot of Division I, Division II type guys that are trying to figure out with all the coaching movement where they're going to fit in and, you know, what schools have interest in them. The portal has totally changed recruiting, and it's really tough for – kids that are in high school now because they're battling transfers a eh, you know to like a Sam Houston Sam Houston is a great example Sam Houston's gonna take a ton of transfers where that used to be wide open for high school players in the city of Houston to go to so you're gonna see a lot of that um, you know moving around so my advice to high school kids that get offered don't be afraid to commit because you want to hold your space but there will be a few trickle in in the later signing day, but mostly it's already done. You know, it seems like it's almost kind of a, I don't know, maybe a, a high school version of what I started to see in the 90s. I lived out in El Paso, and Neil McCarthy was the head basketball coach of New Mexico State. And they were, sometimes he got criticized for kind of reworking his team with JUCOs every year. But that's just kind of what became the way of the world. We saw John Calipari basically perfect it in Kentucky basketball, but it's also going to be true in football, I suppose, now too. Am I right? Yeah, and Kansas State used to be great at that. Um, when Bill they used Snyder. To, Bill Snyder used to do so much um, recruiting the JUCO landscape. Now you could just virtually recruit the portal and not even recruit high school kids. Um, Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss has kind of taken that route. He signed maybe three or four kids in early signing day, and now he's just recruiting the portal. By the way, as you were talking about that, the reason uh, they didn't see it on radio, but, but I smiled because it almost seems like it's a dating site. You know, just kind of uh, people and institutions can let everybody know that they are available. <laughs> they are. And what's funny is I think Wyoming was the school – which actually put an ad in the New York Times looking for a quarterback. I mean, that, you know, that says it all. But, you know, the movement, I don't love it. Um, I think there has to be some sort of reboot of how this is going to work. So we'll see how it plays out. Well, I'm like you in that I don't love it. You know, I kind of like things. You know, I, I grew up when you could think about a team's lineup in whatever sport, and it kind of stayed good five, six, seven years, and you knew who all the players were. I know that's not going to change, but uh, let me let me throw this question at you before we wrap this up. I know that uh, here in Texas, we're very proud. People who went to big universities in Texas are, are proud of their team, and man, they, it just galls them when, when they can't get over on the others. The Texas A&M football recruiting class was just astronomically good, even at early National Signing Day, and, you know, it's been 1939 since the Aggies have actually won a national football championship. Do you think in two or three years, based on what they have coming in, that maybe they can get that done? Well, being an LSU fan, <laughs> it's, you know, your fingers crossed that they don't. But what Jimbo Fisher has built, and you're seeing what they're doing, they're building with the offensive defensive line first. This is, this is a historic moment for them because they're the number one class likely as it relates to all the recruiting sites and they filled needs really important needs up front in the trenches and I think you know the A Aggies are dying for this they're die they really really foresee them winning a national championship in a couple of years but how much pressure does that put on Jimbo Fisher if he doesn't win a national championship in a couple of years, but I think their offense and defensive line are be spectacular. I think Connor Wigman could be really, really special as a the quarterback. They've got skilled guys, but here's the other thing. The portal can bring us 
bring a team down because not everybody can play. That's right. There's only 11 guys on the exactly. field at each time. Exactly. So somebody's going to be disgruntled, and how they manage that is going to be very interesting. But they're set up for success. If there ever was in the history of the state of Texas, UT used to do this. You know, they they would be crowned, you know, the national championship, national champions for recruiting in February. They got it done one time. Let's see if AM can do it. I think they can. They got the resources. Now the target is going to be massive on Jimbo Fisher's back to deliver them a national championship. All right. Well, basketball half times are short. I wish they were like football. Half no, I don't wish they were like football half times. But if they were, we'd have more time to talk. Thanks, Matt, for being with us, and Happy New Year. Roger, you are killing it at Fort Bend, the voice of Fort Bend. Thanks so much for all you do for Vibe, and uh, we'll see you down the road. My pleasure, sir. All right. We'll be back. First Tire and Automotive understands with the new year comes change. Well, we don't believe all change is good, so we are keeping our $15 off an oil change. So now's the time to head to the website, firsttireandauto.com, and claim your savings. First Tire and Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. And the third quarter begins. George Ranch leading Austin, which is going from right to left here in the second half. Sturdivant from the left wing, launches a three, it's too long, no good. DK grabs the rebound, her put back is short. There is India Jackson, goes up too strong on her put back. And Velasquez, the rebound for the George Ranch Longhorns, driving down the right side of the lane, loops one up and it goes in and out. Tough luck for her on that one. Dixon grabs the rebound for the dogs and a near steal by Velasquez, but she forces a turnover in the backcourt. It was Dixon and Sturdivant trying to get the ball forward, but getting in there was Velasquez. So it was a senior getting over on a couple of freshmen. Velasquez takes the inbounds pass. She's dribbling between the rings, guarded by Sturdivant. Entry pass, gets it in there to Foran. Foran with a turnaround near the free throw line. It's no good. Rebound grabbed by Morgan King of George Ranch and gets it out to Velasquez who hits a two. It is 33 to 29. Sturdivant hounded into the backcourt. Stop starts, quickly gets it ahead and throws it. A ball that was tipped by George Ranch. I don't think the officials saw that. They say that it was uh, straight out of Sturdivant's hand. And so it went beyond the baseline to our left and it's 33 to 29 George Ranch and the Lady Longhorns have the basketball. Roger Smith with you on VibeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. Velasquez bounces it to Foran between the rings. Guarded by Jackson. Now it's Morgan King, sends it back to the middle, Velasquez. Velasquez playing catch with Logan Riley now, and it's over to Velasquez on the left wing, a long three-pointer, and it is short. Good position, and the rebound taken by India Jackson. Here goes Sturdivant down the middle of the court and she traveled. She kind of bobbled the ball as her back foot was dragging. So a real test for these young Bulldogs. For the most part, the team is young. Here's a drive into the paint. Lauren Stevens can't find her shot. Gives it to Morgan King, drives the paint. Scoops one up that gets away and it's grabbed by Logan Riley. Now near the top of the key, it's Foran. Foran sends it to King who loses it underneath. India Jackson grabs the steal and gets the ball to Sturdivant. Dogs have not scored yet in this second half. We played almost two and a half minutes and a timeout is taken by the Austin Bulldogs. We'll take it with them. This is VipeFortBend.com. For nearly a decade, Comcast has been helping students get ready. We've connected 4 million low-income students to low-cost, high-speed Xfinity Internet. 
We're working with hundreds of school districts across the country to sponsor free internet and laptops. And now we're turning 1,000 community centers into lift zones, Wi-Fi enabled safe spaces to study. So more students have the tools they need to be ready for anything. Learn more at comcast.com slash education. We're back, the first of our two games today on VibeFortBend.com. We'll have the boys game between Bush and Travis coming your way at 1 p.m. I'll be with Patrick Kinnick on the call of that one. 5.37 to go in the third quarter. And the Austin Lady Bulldogs undefeated in District 26A player taking on George Ranch and trailing 33 to 29 on their home court. Over on the right side, DK almost loses control of the ball, gets it inside to Gabby Johnson. Her shot is no good. India Jackson in a held ball situation with Velasquez and the arrow favors George Ranch. The Lady Longhorns will get it back, leading by four. We've got a substitution coming in. It's Amina Dixon, and she replaces Amber Kirkpatrick. George Ranch inbounding the ball from the near sideline, and there is Morgan King, kicks it over to Logan Riley. Her three is on the way and no good in good position as India Jackson grabs the rebound quickly ahead to Gabby Johnson, and her layup is good. Dogs within two, 33 to 31. There's a long pass to Velasquez on the left wing, moves to the top of the key. Now gives the ball off to King who launches a three and she matches that score plus one better. And now it's a three, excuse me. They haven't put the score on the board yet. Actually it was just a two, 35-31. Here goes DK for the dogs. Her shot is no good. India Jackson with the putback. She was not to be denied. And now it's 35-33. The dogs again within two. Velasquez with a hesitation move and lays it off for her teammate, Leslie Foran, or correction, Lauren Stevens. And the post is hacked in the act as she goes up trying to score. Lauren Stevens listed at six feet. Yeah, probably about right, maybe 6-1. Her first free throw is good. And now Kirkpatrick comes back into the game for the dogs and Amina Dixon goes to the bench. Second free throw, no good. Fight for the rebound, and George Ranch controls. Leslie Foran in the corner, and now a whistle, and one of the dogs knocked it out of bounds. Logan Riley throws it into Velasquez, dribbling between the rings. Maybe out of her shooting range. Now sends it over on the right side. Morgan King looking for something. Now they go all the way over to the left corner. It is Velasquez with a one-hand bounce pass, and it gets away out of bounds. Turnover by George Ranch. And the Bulldogs have it back, trailing 36-33 with 4.10 to go in the third. Sturdivant throws it quickly ahead to Gabby. Johnson gets the ball poked away. Guess what? It's Velasquez, and she leaves it for Logan Riley, but the shot is missed. And a double dribble by George Ranch. Leslie Foran was trying to get a shot up before the defense came, and she dribbled twice. 3.59 to go in the third, and still a three-point game. There goes Sturdivant, quickly ahead, ahead to Gabby Johnson, and a move through the paint and a held ball situation. The Dogs will get it back as Lauren Stevens wrapped up Johnson and the ball, so Kirkpatrick will, re, will inbound it along the baseline. Gabby Johnson, top of the key, Sturdivant, short, no good, rebound fought for, and George Ranch comes away with it. There goes Morgan King. Down the right side of the free throw lane, runs out of room, and the ball somehow knocked out of bounds by the Dogs. Looked like pretty good defense from here, but I will admit I'm more than 80 feet away. Logan Riley to inbound, looking, looking. Gets it into Velasquez, deep in the right corner, trying to get around Sturdivant, behind the back dribble. Now she moves way up uh, to the top of the key between the rings. Still dribbling, sends it to Logan Riley. 
Now it's foreign. And a turnover by Velasquez. I think an offensive foul as she she knocks Sturdivant down. Sturdivant looking very tired. Of course, both teams have been spending a lot of energy out there. Sturdivant in the backcourt. Logan Riley defending her, but now they get it into the forecourt. Kirkpatrick has the ball, sends it back to Sturdivant. Launches the three. Good. And we're tied. 36 all, a whistle. And a timeout, even though the Bulldogs just tied it, it's a timeout taken by Austin, and we'll take it too. This is Roger Smith on VipeFortBend.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. And we're back. The Austin Lady Bulldogs, I think that timeout was simply because Coach Dickerson took a look at her troops and they look tired. Sturdivant, if I'm not mistaken, has played every single second of this game. And there's the inbounds pass to Velasquez, who gets ahead of Sturdivant and lays one in off the glass. She went coast to coast after taking the inbounds pass. She just found a little path through all the traffic. And she has that speed, even when she's dribbling. But there goes Sturdivant back to the other end and a little floater that rattles around and falls down through. 38 all. 2.47 to go in the third quarter. Velasquez has it on the right wing. Sturdivant staring her down. There she goes into the paint and she drives in on India Jackson and a foul called on Jackson. Looked like India had pretty good position and planted her feet, but evidently the official ruled that she kind of stuck a knee out to impede Velasquez's progress, and she's shooting free throws. First one good. We are untied, 39 to 38, George Ranch on top. Velasquez taking her time, puts up her free throw. Those go very high in the air, just like her jump shot. She misses it. Foran gets the rebound for George Ranch and another chance. And the ball knocked out of bounds. George Ranch last touched it. So Austin gets it, trailing 39 to 38. They haven't been ahead for a long time. Here goes Sturdivant. Thinks about a three, passes it up. Gets the ball to Dixon. Now back to Sturdivant. Three on the way. Too long, no good, but a long rebound. Comes down to Dixon. And Foran poked it away. Last touched by Leslie Foran. So it's still Austin Ball. And Dixon looking, looking. And she threw it away on the inbounds pass. Foran stole it away. And then Dixon knocked Foran down. A foul in the backcourt. And Dixon's going to have to take a seat. She has three fouls, and Manal Youssef comes into the game. She had appeared earlier, and now she's back on the floor. 39-38, George Ranch, Sturdivant guarding Velasquez. Sends it into the corner. Morgan King drives the baseline, can't find anything, and backs up. Still dribbling. Moves to the right elbow. Now over in the left corner, gets the ball to Malia. Malia almost lost it. Now Foran to the free throw line, pulls up. Shoots from 17, no good. Rebound grabbed by the Dawes. DK grabs it. Quickly back down the floor, and it is saved by Kirkpatrick. She's kind of in jail under the basket. Gets it to Gabby Johnson, who scores on a quick turnaround, and the Dawes are in the lead. 40 to 39 with 138 to go in the third. Velasquez on the right wing. Dawes fans chanting D up. Here goes Velasquez, runs out of room. Pass almost got away. Morgan King through the paint. 
And the ball is poked away by the Bulldogs as she tries to get an opportunity to shoot. No foul call, just good solid defense by the Austin Lady Bulldogs. For a moment it looked like Yusuf was going to throw the ball in. But she's not going to do that because it belongs to George Ranch. Nothing gets by me. Well, that's not true. 40 to 39, Austin on top, but Foran with the long three-pointer. And the shot is no good, and a whistle. I don't think it's a foul. I'm not sure what that whistle was for. It might have been inadvertent. But Austin has a one-point lead and the basketball as we close in on the one-minute threshold. Yusuf holding the ball over her head. Long cross-court pass to Sturdivant. Launches a three from the left wing. Too long, no good. And they're going to get Yusuf for going over the back of Foran. A foul on the Austin guard. No shots resulting from it. But George Ranch has it back with 53 seconds left. Morgan King, right wing. Guarded by Kirkpatrick. Sturdivant moves over with help defense and ties her up. The arrow favors George Ranch. So the Longhorns will get to keep it. But next time there's a held ball, it might come in real handy for Austin to get the ball back. Here goes Velasquez into the paint. Floater from the free throw line. No good. Rebound grabbed by DK. Gets it to Yusuf into the open court. Dribbles through a double team. Kirkpatrick thinks about a shot. Gets it to Sturdivant. Quick release three. Top of the key. No good. And the rebound taken by Foran of George Ranch. we got 25 seconds left in the third. Bulldogs up by one. And Foran gets the ball knocked away as he drives to the hoop. She hits the floor. No foul called. 21.6 to go in the third quarter. Want to thank my producer, Les Clary, for his help. And DK blocks a shot. Gabby Johnson picks it up as it was Lauren Stevens trying to hit a jumper. Now Sturdivant in the backcourt facing a double team. And Velasquez gets her to dribble it out of bounds. Velasquez relentless with her defense. Foreign to throw it in for George Ranch with 6.9 to go in the third. There goes Velasquez right down. 14.64 through the lane. Draws a foul with three seconds to go. She's going to get free throws. And this might put George Ranch on top after three quarters. Savannah Velasquez listed at 5-1. And if she's 5'1", then I'm going to say inch for inch, she's as good a girls player as I see in Fort Bend County. Inch for inch. Her first free throw is good. We are tied at 40. Three seconds to go in the third. Velasquez shoots. Rainbow foul shot. No good. Rebound to Gabby Johnson. One second left. Sturdivant launches it, but too late. And it's short anyway. We're done with three quarters. It's been awesome, and I'll bet the last eight minutes are going to be awesome too. 40 to 40, this is VikeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. First Iron Automotive understands with the new year comes change. Well, we don't believe all change is good, so we are keeping our $15 off an oil change. So now's the time to head to the website firsttireauto.com and claim your savings. First Tire Automotive, supporting school and youth sports programs for years, getting you to and from the game always. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com.
We want to thank the folks at the Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland. They take care of business every day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Doesn't get much better than this. 40 to 40 after three quarters. And here come the Austin Lady Bulldogs with the first possession of this third quarter. And there's a layup that's short by DK. And a loose ball foul on one of the Bulldogs. I think they got Gabby Johnson for that. So full court press by the Lady Bulldogs. But they get it to... Uh, Logan Riley, who was not being guarded, she brings it across the timeline. Gives the ball to Velasquez near the midcourt circle. Sturdivant shadowing her. Here goes Velasquez to the baseline, pulls up and shoots from 12 and smooth as silk. In it goes. 42 to 40. Sturdivant thought about the three, gets it to India Jackson. And a foul on the floor by Lauren and Stevens of George Ranch. And I don't think there's going to be free throws coming. No, there's not going to be. Not yet. Gabby Johnson to throw it in. Throws it, uh, holds the ball over her head. Now finally gets it in. Gets it to Dixon. Can't get a shot off. Throws an entry pass. Intended for Johnson and a foul on George Ranch. Two quick fouls by the Lady Longhorns. And Gabby Johnson will throw it in again. And same place, gets it in there to Dixon. And now a three from Sturdivant off the glass and good. 43 to 42, Austin back in the lead. Logan Riley passes off. It is Foran who hands it off to Velasquez, goes down the left side of the lane, couldn't find anything, and rerouted herself. Now into her post, Lauren Stevens, little turnaround, no good. Velasquez there with the follow. She's everywhere. What a player. Sturdivant sends it over on the right side to DK. And now at the right elbow, it's Gabby Johnson short with the shot. But the George Ranch player who had an opportunity for the rebound let it go off her hands. That was Malia. She didn't expect it to be an air ball and kind of got down on her quicker than she thought. Gabby Johnson to throw in along the baseline. And quickly into Sturdivant, whose shot is blocked. Wasn't real quick getting it off of there, but DK recovers the loose ball for the Boston, for the Austin Bulldogs. And Gabby Johnson, too hard off the glass, no good. India Jackson fighting for it, but Foran comes away with the ball for George Ranch. She keeps dribbling, spins into the paint, and the ball tipped away. Now it's Velasquez, a three-pointer on the way! And I think you know what happened. It's good, 47-43. George Ranch with a four point lead. Now quickly inside to India Jackson, back to Sturdivant, three on the way, yes! Oh, beautiful basketball at both ends. Six minutes to go and it's 47-46, George Ranch. There goes Velasquez, into the paint, what a move off the glass, no good. Rebound fought for, Sturdivant has it. The dog's down by one, but they have the basketball. 5.45 to go, Sturdivant, three, yes! Just a freshman. Oh, this is exciting. 49 to 47, the Bulldogs on top. Here goes Foran for George Ranch. To the right side of the free throw lane. She has her shot blocked by Gabby Johnson, but a whistle. Not on Johnson's action, but whatever happened when the ball was loose after the blocked shot. 5.31 left. We've got a one o'clock boys game, Travis and Bush. But it can't be any more exciting than this. Man, oh man. So on uh, Tuesday night, we had Marshall blowing out Angleton 86 to 51. And then last night, the Marshall boys beat Lamar Consolidated 94 to 50. So I've just been dying for a close game. And, and we certainly have one. And I was so excited I forgot to take a timeout. But we'll take it next time. I'm sure there will be a couple of timeouts because with the pace of this game being what it is and with the Austin Bulldogs having a 10-player roster and 
with George Ranch having a nine-player roster and one of their players, Rachel Okoye, not being available. Well, they're, they're probably going to have to call some timeouts down the stretch. But I'll tell you what, if we had Energizer as a sponsor, I would say something about Samantha or Savannah Velasquez being the Energizer Bunny. I, I should say Savannah Velasquez being the Energizer Bunny player of the game who just keeps going and going and going. Resetting things for you with 5.31 to go. The Austin Bulldogs lead 49 to 47, but George Ranch inbounds the ball underneath the basket at which they're shooting. Here goes Foran from the right elbow. Her jumper is no good. Fight for the rebound is taken by India Jackson. Here comes Sturdivant. Passes off to DK. Now it's Gabby Johnson underneath. She gets the ball knocked away. Last touch by George Ranch. On the floor for the dogs, you have Amina Dixon, Andrea Sturdivant, India Jackson, Gabby Johnson, and Kaleche DK. Quick release, two pointer, no good by Johnson, but the uh, rebound grabbed by DK, and it's poked away by George Ranch. It's still going to be Austin's basketball at, underneath the basket at which they're shooting. DK called on to throw it in. She's looking, she's looking. Gets it in quickly to Dixon who thinks about shooting. But around they, the horn they go with it. DK hands it to Sturdivant between the rings. Sends it over on the right side to Dixon. And he got a foul on George Ranch. Non-shooting foul. Looking at the scoreboard. They're not over the limit yet. That is their fifth foul. Sturdivant to throw it in this time. From the baseline, gets it in. And there's Jackson who passed up the shot. Now Johnson has it into the paint. Little floater off the glass and it's good. Bulldogs lead it by four, 51 to 47. They have scored eight straight points. Savannah Velasquez. Throws it to the middle of the floor, top of the key, it's Foran, hands it back to Velasquez, drives the left side of the lane, draws a foul as she heads to the rack. And coming off the bench is head coach LaQuisha Dickerson. She believes that should have been a held ball rather than a foul. She's getting the official's attention and putting two thumbs up in the air. Wanted a held ball, and if, if it had been, however, it still would have belonged to George Ranch. First free throw, good. Breaking a string of eight straight Austin points. Second free throw by Velasquez, also good. We have a two point game again, 51 to 49. Gabby Johnson inbounds to Sturdivant, hounded by Velasquez. Gets past her, lays one up off the back iron, no good. Rebound George Ranch, Foran grabbed it, handed to Velasquez. Quickly back down the floor they go. And Velasquez draws a, draws a foul as she goes to the rack. You know, I love watching high school sports. I, I love watching all these athletes play, but every once in a while I, I see one and I really want to tell her how great I think she is. And that would be Savannah Velasquez. But as soon as I said that, she missed the first free throw. So it's still 51 to 49. And she'll get one more. 4.17 left. Second free throw, good. 51 to 50. Sturdivant takes the inbounds pass, and it's just her and Velasquez in the backcourt. She keeps dribbling, gets across the timeline. Launches a three. It's short. And a rebound by India Jackson, and she blew the bunny. Oh, it was in close. She should have had it. And in the backcourt, George Ranch trying to get it out of there. Logan Riley gets it to Velasquez. Pulls up from three-point land. Off the iron, no good. And DK watches the ball go out of bounds as she made sure that Morgan King didn't save it for George Ranch. Austin has the ball back, leading 51 to 50, but they're in the backcourt. Here comes the defensive pressure. Now it's Gabby Johnson dribbling toward the hoop. Leaves it for Jackson, way up good. Sweet assist 
Gabby Johnson passing to Jackson. Now it's a three-point game again. Four and backs up behind the three-point lane. A couple of other Longhorns touch it. Now it's Velasquez on the right wing. Gets a pick. Launches a three. It's off to the right and no good. Long rebound goes into the corner. The ball will belong to Austin. Logan Riley hustled over there to get a hand on it for George Ranch, but could not redirect the ball back onto the court. 3.22 to go, and it's a three-point game. And Logan Riley is defending the inbounds pass, and she swatted it out of bounds. Austin will try again to inbound it, and it'll be India Jackson to throw it in. She gets it to Gabby Johnson. Gabby dribbles across the midcourt stripe. Goes all the way to the rack. She's fouled as she goes up. Lauren Stevens got her on the arm. Two shots coming for Gabby Johnson. They give her the basketball. She takes several bounces and the first one is short. Free throws could be critical as we get down near the end of this ball game. The senior, Gabby Johnson, ready for free throw number two, and it's also no good. And a whistle, I think a lane violation on Austin. Free throw was no good anyway. Their lead is still 53-50. It's a one-score game. And Velasquez trying to move along the floor with Sturdivant following her. Now Logan Riley has it to Velasquez over in the left corner, drives in, no good, rebound taken by Morgan King of George Ranch. Another chance for the Lady Longhorns. Velasquez now has it, dribbling between the rings, trying to set up the offensive chess pieces. Dribbling over to the right wing now, and launches a three, it's long. And the ball bounces out of bounds as DK watches it go out. Wise move by Kalechi. Inbounds pass, almost stolen by Foran. It was intended for India Jackson. Great hustle by Foran, but it's still the Bulldogs' opportunity to throw it in. Jackson holds the ball over her head, gets it into Sturdivant, ahead of everybody, and gets it over there to DK. Can't find her shot immediately, but reroutes it and can't get it into the hoop. And the rebound grabbed by Lauren Stevens, and here comes George Ranch. Velasquez from the free throw line. Good. It's 53 to 52. Less than two and a half minutes left. India Jackson to inbound the ball for the Austin Bulldogs. Throws a long pass, and the ball is swatted away by George Ranch, but Austin ends up with it. Gabby Johnson backing in. Baby hook. Good. It is 55 to 52. Now two minutes to go. There goes Velasquez. Up to the hoop she goes. It's an offensive foul. The Bulldogs will have it back. Velasquez did not like the call at all. Still a long way to go though. 159 showing on the clock. 55-52 timeout taken by George Ranch. We'll take it with him. This is BikeFortBend.com. For nearly a decade, Comcast has been helping students get ready. We've connected 4 million low-income students to low-cost, high-speed Xfinity Internet. We're working with hundreds of school districts across the country to sponsor free Internet and laptops. And now, we're turning 1,000 community centers into lift zones, Wi-Fi-enabled safe spaces to study, so more students have the tools they need to be ready for anything. Learn more at Comcast.com slash education. VibeFortBend.com broadcasts are brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome. First Tire and Automotive, Archer Volkswagen, and the Needville Insurance Agency. So 55 to 52 is our score. The Austin Bulldogs lead it. These fans have been treated to a great game. It started in the morning, and uh, let's see, what time is it? It's 12.44. I'm not going to be at that second game in time. 
Murphy's Law tells me this game might go to overtime. Okay, 159 left. Austin has the ball and a three-point lead. And a long pass, and it's going to be stolen away by George Ranch. A bad pass that ended up in the hands of Lauren Stevens. Here comes Foran. Goes into the free throw circle, gets the ball to Velasquez. Velasquez into the free throw circle herself. Back to Foran. Thinks about a three. Long cross court pass. Heavy contact. Loose ball. The dogs have it. Amina Dixon stole it away. Sturdivant near the sideline. Trying to save it. Now she starts dribbling. Gets into the front court. Now sends it over there to Dixon. Dixon to Gabby Johnson who traveled before she made her move. Could be costly. It's a three point game. 55 to 52 with 125 to go. And with the violation, the George Ranch Lady Longhorns have the ball back. Here comes Velasquez, dribbling. Sturdivant picks her up near midcourt. She moves to the right wing. Sturdivant right there, but not in her face right there. Now Velasquez dribbles over to the left side. The clock is at 110. Now it's four and three-pointer. In and out, no good. Rebound, India Jackson for Austin. Gets it to Sturdivant. The Bulldogs would probably like to bleed a little clock here to Dixon. Now back to Sturdivant. Just playing some keep away. Dixon is going to shoot a three. It's no good. Rebound to Foran of George Ranch. 45 seconds to go. Gets it back to Velasquez. Launches a three. Too long. No good. Rebound Gabby Johnson. And we got, what do we have? Two, two officials are discussing something and one of them is gonna go over to, I think there might have been a timeout called possibly. I, I see a lot of confusion, especially on the faces of both head coaches. All right, so uh, whatever the reason, I think we're going to have free throws for Gabby Johnson of Austin. She can make it a two-score game. It's 55 to 52. It's a technical foul. I thought I saw an official signal technical, but I just didn't know what happened that could merit a technical. The free throw is good. It is 56 to 52. Gabby's still there and will shoot again. No other players alongside the free throw line as she shoots the two shot technical. That shot is good. 57 to 52 with 37.2 seconds to go. But now the officials walk down to the other end. I think we got a double technical. So Velasquez is going to go to the line for George Ranch, and she'll have a pair of shots. First one is short. The girl's got to be tired. Oh, man, she's just played like her hair's on fire the whole game. Second free throw. Rattles off, no good. Now the ball will move to the near sideline and George Ranch will inbound it. 37 and 2 tenths seconds to go and Logan Riley to throw it in. Gives it into Foran. Launches from the top of the key. It's no good. Rebound fought for. Foran gets it back. And she traveled before she passed it. Oh, my goodness. She tried to get it to Morgan King, and she traveled before releasing the ball. 57 to 52 with 30 and one half seconds to go. Gabby Johnson double teamed in the backcourt. And they foul her on purpose as she delivers a pass to Manal Yusuf. And it looks like we're going to have a parade to the free throw line in these final seconds. Gabby Johnson hit two technical foul shots, her last trip to the line, and these are big ones. The lead is five. 
First shot is good. The lead is now six, 58 to 52. By the way, fans, thanks for listening. I, I know you've enjoyed it. How could you not? Except uh, the outcome may not be satisfying for George Ranch. Second free throw short. George Ranch does get the rebound, trading by six. And a foul committed in the backcourt. Not the wisest thing. Kalechi DK has whistled for a foul. And that means we walk back to the other end. And without time going off the clock, George Ranch will have a chance to cut into the six-point lead as Foran is at the line. So I was, I was saying um, <clears throat> about to let you know that when this game is over, I've got to do a super quick goodbye because I have to put all my toys into the car and head on over to Bush where I'm probably, definitely, I'm definitely going to miss the start of the game between Travis and Bush. Patrick Kinnick is sitting there waiting. Where is he? Where is he? First free throw good. Foran cuts the lead to five. Austin on top, 58 to 53. 23 and 9 tenths seconds to go. She gets one more foul shot. In the air, good. And a timeout taken by Austin. We'll take it with them. This is VibeFortBend.com. It's 58 to 54, just under 24 seconds remaining. For nearly a decade, Comcast has been helping students get ready. We've connected 4 million low-income students to low-cost, high-speed Xfinity Internet. We're working with hundreds of school districts across the country to sponsor free Internet and laptops. And now we're turning 1,000 community centers into lift zones, Wi-Fi-enabled safe spaces to study, so more students have the tools they need to be ready for anything. Learn more at Comcast.com education. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Welcome back. We'll see if the Austin Lady Bulldogs can hold on. Sturdivant to inbound along the baseline. Ball almost knocked away. Now Sturdivant has it back, dribbling in heavy traffic, and the ball comes out. It's loose. George Ranch has it, and now it's taken away by Gabby Johnson. 14 seconds to go, and she is fouled intentionally by Logan Riley. So it's a four-point lead for the Austin Lady Bulldogs, 12.5 remaining, and they won't have anybody alongside the free throw lane to rebound. Gabby Johnson will be down there by herself, plus four George Ranch players. Austin just wants to play defense. Johnson's first free throw, nothing but net. She's pretty clutch at the free throw line. One more coming in the air. Good. Five out of six free throws down the stretch for Gabby Johnson. Ten seconds to go. Six-point game. Velasquez launches a three on the way. Too long, no good. Rebound fought for. Whistle with three seconds left. And the possession arrow favors George Ranch. But the Austin Lady Bulldogs have this game finally in hand. They're going to win it at 60-54. to 54, And they're leading by six. Here comes the inbounds pass. Foran launches a three. It's no good. There's the buzzer. Woo, baby. What an exciting basketball game as the Austin Lady Bulldogs get the win. The score, 60 to 54. For everyone who's connected with Vipe, Roger Smith, thank you so much for listening. And we will talk to you as soon as we can get this stuff over to Bush High School where the Travis Tigers are taking on the Broncos. Goodbye, everybody. Guys are stepping on my cords. Anyway, goodbye, everybody.